so now we are going to actually start working with the 3d modeling part and with our 3d objects so before we can actually start working with it let's just get introduced to our 3d area this 3d area in which we are going to work fine so we are going to work in a 3d plane and a 3d plane is represented by three axes x y and z so you can already see two axes that are provided that is red represents our x axis and green represents our y axis the z axis is actually represented by blue color which is not displayed here by default if you want you can enable it by going to this overlay section and here we can select the z axis right so this is our x y and z axis now if you are used to computer terminology red green and blue are the three basic colors for mixing of light or colors and uh, the same sequence is being followed for x y and z so red is x y is green and blue is for z axis now what are they representing in uh, x y and z so if you talk about earth so if you consider a flat surface earth's surface then x and y are our flat surface area now when we will be modeling we usually will be creating a ground so the ground will be usually on x and y surface fine and the z axis is basically going up and down so upwards the positive z direction is your towards the sky you can say and the other thing is going below ground negative directions so if i just delete this particular cube for the time being what you notice is the place where these three axes are meeting is our 3d coordinate 0, 0, 0 fine any object in 3d is its location is represented by a coordinate where it is located so this is 0, 0,0,0 blender provides as a infinite universe fine like so you can see it's a infinite space where we can create our scenes models place things so on but we need to have a location like if you have seen any kind of sci-fi movies earth is always the center of all the universe for all the references so here also this 0, 0,0,0 is the central reference part this is the negative z direction this is the positive z direction similarly we have your x and y in the negative and positive directions fine so if you move any object in the positive direction or move it in the positive direction it will move upwards and if you move your object in negative direction it will go downwards fine so generally any scene that we want to create will be used in this manner apart from that blender supports physics where by default a gravity of earth is provided and the gravity acts in the z direction so if you have a object kept here which is under the influence of gravity it will fall towards the negative x direction obviously it will not stop on any place if there is no proper plane or other thing provided it will just keep on falling but this is the direction the gravity is acting so that is the importance for you to know the axes and their directions fine now second thing that you will notice is this particular grid that is there so this grid is basically representation of our unit one square you can see is one square unit so when you are creating your objects placing your objects this grid is very useful it's like a graph paper for reference your blender could be set to empirical or metric system this you can go to the scenes over here in your properties section fine right now it is showing me a bit less of these things because i deleted the cube based on the selected object you may get to see different set of tabs over here but whatever is the situation this scene tab will show up all the time because it represents settings for your scene and if you go to the scene you will see there is something called as unit where by default it is set to metric right now and metric your rotation will be in degrees length is in meters 
mass will be kilograms time second and so on you could set it to empirical fine where you will see it is foot pound second so on and then you can set it to none so basically one square will represent one unit or sometimes we also call it as a blender unit when you don't want to stick to a specific scale type of thing you can use this anyways we will leave it to the default one and scale unit is this is how big one unit would be that means how much it can be broken into so this is right now since we are in meters one box represents this length represents one meter so this is one square meter area representation and if we look at our cube it is occupying two boxes so this is two by two right so this is a cube so this will be two cubic meter cube okay anyways so that is about our units fine so with this in mind we can continue to the next point and we will discuss about few other things in the next video